Hello everybody! In this video I will tell you about our work with Jinho Bike on extreme values in real non-hemmission random matrix ensembles. More precisely, we finally managed to compute the distribution function of the largest real eigenvalue in the real Ginebra ensemble. Now this had been an outstanding task for several decades and while resolving it we actually completed three separate objectives. Number one, the identification of an integrable system for the distribution function of the largest real eigenvalue. Two, the derivation of tail expansions. And finally, three, the computation of a novel Fretholm determinant formula which is amenable to numerical simulations. I will show you now a few details of our work. First, uh, the setup. So we're working with real Ginebra matrices, so just n by n square real matrices whose entries are IID copies of standard normal random variables. No symmetry imposed. This is in a way, in a sense, the most basic real non-Hamishan random matrix ensemble you can think of. It was introduced by Ginebra 55 years ago and soon afterwards popularized by Robert May in 1972. May in particular was interested in ecosystems and he used real Ginebra matrices in his model. Here are some details about this. So he was analyzing multi-species predator-prey models that commonly you model here by a first-order autonomous ODE system with a fairly complicated, highly nonlinear right-hand side. Are you interested in stability properties of that system? Because those will tell you whether certain species in your predator-prey model will eventually die out, right? So what you do is, of course, you tailor expand the right-hand side, you linearize it a lot around an equilibrium point of the system. You're working here, after all, with an autonomous system. That brings you to this level. So here, bold x would be an interaction matrix between the different species, and mu, just a scalar, say, self-regulating parameter. Now, what May said is, how he argued is as follows. He said, well, in an honest predator-prey model, you're never going to know that interaction between the different species in all details, so why not just replace it by a uh, random matrix? And he exactly chose a real Geneva matrix. Now at this point it should be clear why I'm interested in extreme values, because those extreme values, aka the spectral radius of the matrix X, will precisely tell you about the stability of solutions, aka the large time behavior of solutions. By the time of May's paper 1972, not too many things had been known about the spectral radius of a real Geneva matrix. What was known, this appeared in Geneva's paper in 65, was the circular law. So in other words, the uh, almost true convergence of the underlying empirical spectral distribution. Okay. Um, now, if you look here at those pictures, you see a peculiar effect, which is um, inherent only to real non hamishan random matrix ensembles, and that is what's going on here on the real axis. So on the real axis there's lots and lots of blue dots, those are eigenvalues. In fact, for an n by n real uh, Geneva matrix, for large n there are roughly square root n many real eigenvalues. This is known as the Saturn effect because, well, it just looks like a ring of a Saturn. Right. Saturn effect is a visually nice property, but it hints at serious technical difficulties when you're analyzing actually the fluctuations of the real eigenvalues around the boundary of the unit disk. And that's precisely what we did in our work with Gino. Okay. Um, about the fluctuations of the spectral radius before coming to the real ones, prior work by Brian Ryder and Chris Sinclair in 2014, so many, many years after 1965, settled um, the central limit theorem for the spectral radius coming from the non-real eigenvalues. Okay? Of course, as large, for large n, you're going to creep up to the radius of the disk, square root n, but you're going to fluctuate around in a ra rather elementary fashion, namely Gumbel distributed. What happened on the real axis was unknown till our work with Juno in 2018, so roughly two years ago. What we did, we computed the central limit theorem for the largest real eigenvalue. You can do the same thing for the smallest one. There's an obvious symmetry around the vertical axis. And what we did is we computed the distribution function of this limiting random variable chi here. Previous work also by Brian Ryder, Chris Sinclair, and Oleg Zaboransky, uh, Roger Tribe, and Michael Pavlovsky identified certain operator determinant formulas for the distribution function of chi. Our starting point were those formulas, and now we identified the integrable system behind them, so we dramatically simplified those formulas. Out came this very compact expression here. And this expression justifies the title of my talk, because Ginebra meets Schrödinger in this equation. On the left, 
we have, well, a cumulative distribution function of random variable in Geneva's world. On the right, this special function P here, that sits in Schrodinger's nonlinear wave um, theory world. Okay, I'm not going to say much about the uh, nature of P. P arises as a distinguished solution to a so-called inverse scattering problem for the zakharov shabat system. zakharov shabat system is an important object in the scattering theory of nonlinear evolution, PDEs, the 2x2 two two ODE system has a fully fledged theory around it, but this is a little bit beyond the probability theme here of this symposium. Okay, um, For now, maybe just keep in mind the structure here. So exponent of antiderivative of this special function uh, p to a square and then another antiderivative of the special function. The structure is important because if you're familiar with um, the work of Craig Tracy and Harold Whittem on the Gaussian or Foreground Ensemble, then you will realize that this formula is absolutely similar. The only difference to the Gaussian or Foreground Ensemble, which is a mission matrix model, is that function p is replaced by q, which is a Poirot transcendent. Everything else is completely similar. Okay, now how do you arrive at such a formula? I will walk you through some of the details of the proof. So we proved this in much more general context, which is the context of thinned real Geneva processes. So you start with the real eigenvalues in the real Geneva ensemble. It is known for about 10 years that those form a Pfaffian point process. Now what you can do is you can thin out the process, fix your parameter gamma, and then throw out each particle independently with likelihood 1 minus gamma. That yields another point process. Now you compute statistical properties of that process. First one is, well, distribution function of the largest particle for finite n in the thin process. Turns out it's the square root of a certain regularized operator determinant. How can you prove this identity? Well, you prove a general result about a Pfaffian point process and when they are thinned out. Turns out a thinning procedure um, preserves the integrability, which is to say that the thin Pfaffian point process is still Pfaffian and there's a simple relation between the underlying correlation functions. Once you have this result, it's rather straightforward to get to this point up there. I'm not going to tell you many details about the underlying operator. Okay, now having this formula, now of course you want to push n to infinity. You know, from the scaling limit, but there it's better if you first simplify everything. Here the simplification is carried out for even ends. This is a typical headache that persists in the analysis, very much like in beta equals one ensemble in the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, everything is parity dependent. Anyways, you simplify the previous uh, formula on the other slide from regularized two determinant for matrix operators to just two ordinary photon determinant of scalar operators. Scalar operator T is finite rank. Unfortunately, it's not a Christoffel Dabu operator in the sense that this kernel is not a Christoffel Dabu kernel coming from some orthogonal polynomials. And this is a serious issue. Okay? Now, once you have this door, you center and rescale everything correctly in order to obtain a meaningful limit, and the meaningful limit is written here in those two lines. Out front, ordinary photon determinant of a trace class operator T, T as the kernel is written down there, and then a determinant of a certain 3 by 3 matrix. That matrix depends on a bunch of unknowns, U, V, so on and so forth. All those unknowns are expressed in terms of the resolvent of this operator T. Here's one formula on top. Now, this is a perfectly um, well uh, manageable formula. However, it's really hard to identify an integrable system based on that formula, because there's the roadblock that T does not have Christopher W structure. This is because, well, for finite n it didn't have it, and actually when n goes to infinity, situation didn't get much better. The Christopher W structure is very nice because once you have it, there's a machinery developed by Craig and Harold more than 25 years ago, which, let, which, which lets you identify the integral system. So we had to bypass the roadblock, and this is actually fairly easy once you remember Fourier. Fourier's world. So you go to Fourier space. This is our kernel. Each one here, the Gaussian one hump, you replace by Fourier integral. You have to integrate not over the real line because otherwise the integrals are not convergent. Right? You're going to replace each factor g here by one of those integrals and then you want to permute um, the three integrals so everything has to be nicely con convergent and this only is achieved if not all of those Fourier integrals are not on the real line. Anyways, once you do the computation you realize that the product operator composition more precisely of t and chi s, chi s multiplies by characteristic function of interval s to plus infinity. This composition is actually operator composition Fourier transform, some trace class operator E inverse Fourier transform. And this is nice because of course the operator determinant is invariant under the unitary conjugation of the Fourier transform. So actually the determinant on the previous slide is just the determinant of this identity minus E operator and E turns out to have 
Christopher Dabu structure. Okay. With this little trick, you massage everything in Christopher Dabu structure, and now the machinery applies that allows you to uh, extract the intercoupled system. At least for one of the two fractal determinants that I showed you earlier. The other one, the determinant of the three by three matrix, there you need a different tool set. Okay. After um, some calculations, out comes exact formula for the limiting distribution function. Tracy Widom factor here out front, but not depending on Quan Levy function, but on solution to inverse scattering problem, and then some combinations of hyperbolic functions. Those functions are defined in terms of the antiderivative of solution to inverse scattering problem. But this is again where Professor Schrödinger appears. Okay. Um, you can ask me whether this occurrence of a uh, Schrödinger a wave type input is just an isolated uh, curiosity of the real Geneva ensemble, but well, it is not. This was proven by Laszlo Erdős and his collaborators less than a year ago. They showed that the scaling behavior we discovered on the on the level of the largest real eigenvalue in the real Geneva ensemble is actually universal in a much bigger class of real non-Hermitian random matrices. In other words, this random variable chi here, or here in the thin version, chi gamma, defines a new universality class. That's why the work is even more interesting now. Okay, corollaries to it are the tail expansions. Um, tail expansions for gamma equals 1, so when you don't throw out any levels, had been computed by probabilists in Warwick, uh, Zaboronsky, Tribe, and Fitzgerald, using purely probabilistic arguments. Now here, having the exact, exact formulas, having identified the integral systems, we can prove those constant factors in a purely analytical fashion. Formulas are written down there. The last result I want to present is the simple Fretholm determinant formulas. While the integrable system connections are certainly nice, it is not so nice when you are interested in numerical simulations. Because the solution to the inverse scattering problem is really hard to implement on the computer. Much easier are Fretholm determinants, simple Fretholm determinants. And here's a formula that turns out that distribution function of the largest particle in the thin Genome E process is just a convex combination of two very simple Fretholm determinants. That operator S has a kernel which is as nice as it can possibly be. Okay, this is all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for tuning in. I want to thank Auntie for organizing the session, and I will now finish by showing you the relevant references to our work uh, with Genome.